They didn't tell us about rugby league at school, but then we were middle class, lived in the south, and played rugby union. So we never knew that far off in the cloth-capped north, men took money for playing a very different rugger. This film is about rugby league, with rugby union a kind of Banquo's ghost. Rugby union officials at Twickenham would allow neither themselves nor their members to be filmed, for even to appear in the same role of celluloid as the blackballed league sends a shudder through the union. The union prefers to nurse a private grudge against its prodigal son. As one official said, we think we are right, but in the democratic world in which we live, our view might not be understood. It's evening at Wigan, a goodish crowd and everyone wants the same thing. Finesse and fireworks and fitness and force mailleur. I think rugby league ideally is this blend of finesse and speed and sheer physical brute force. To me it's the perfect blend of the artistic and the primitive. First, the differences. In rugby union, there are 15 players aside. Here, there are 13. For rugby league has no wing forwards, the spoil sports of the game. So the field is less cluttered and play fluider. Difference number two. What kind of union supporter would wave a wooden rattle or wield a large teddy bear? Not that the game is anything but deadly serious. There's two games, you know. There's the game that you see on television and there's the game that you see here. And it can be the same game in the sense that television can be here and Eddie Waring, who is perhaps the best commentator of them all, can be here. But the thing he's presenting comes over as a kind of comedy, doesn't it? Um, almost as a rival to all in wrestling. And that isn't really the game at all, you see. The game is a very serious, very tough game. But it's also, um, although the players themselves would blush if you said this, it's really a very intelligent game, almost a very intellectual game. What a big crowd at Wigan and the home team, who, until last Saturday, hadn't lost a match. They're rather keen to, of course, break this Castleport record. And the language, another difference. What a contrast from old Deer Park or Twickers. Oh, they've thrown him in the shit now. <laughs> That's a bloody shame. <laughs> He's hurting his soul. Hardest day. They're without his little mate, Hepworth, the pigeon fancier. And they could do with him on this ground. Wigan, of course, it's tremendously. There are fewer hold-ups in league simply because you can't boot the ball out of play direct. In league, the ball weaves from man to man, seeking a way through until it goes down with the sinking ship. Knock on! But it's in a player being allowed to rise from the ground with the ball after a tackle, and not as in Union releasing it, that Rugby League has developed its different style. Get on! Obstruction! In England, Rugby League never left its cradle. It still lies landlocked in three northern counties the coal and heavy woollen area of Yorkshire, the mill towns of Lancashire and the dockland of Cumberland. Rugby league cannot but throw up encounters that are either wars of the roses or local derbies. Radio, 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 radio. Pause for breath there for a quick commercial. On now to rugby league. 
Tonight at Wigan, the job of tilting at the Saints' windmill falls to the lot of Oldham, who haven't so far had a particularly successful season apart from getting to the Lancashire Cup final. A union has checked the virus by its control of pitches, a stranglehold on schools and eight fierce bylaws. For the union regards itself as the one true church and the league as an apostate and heretic. So a hard fight, but another Saints' Cup. These players are banned from rugby union unless they are servicemen. For tragically, it takes war for the true power of British rugby ever to be seen. It's quite understandable for some people to think that rugby union administrators are stuffy, um, because quite a lot of them are, and quite uh, backward thinking, I believe. Um, they're too terrified of the things that are going on in 1968. Uh, they are frightened, uh, they still want to retain this Victorian atmosphere where uh, there is a boss man and there is a serf, and that they are in complete ch charge of it all. These men are not full-time professionals. During the week they work like anyone else. Factories, mills, you know, something like that. Because I would say the majority of them are working class people who work, you know. Joiners, bricklayers, in Yorkshire, hell of a lot of fellas who work down the pit, you know. They play hard to win, or winning means a bonus. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, an average is uh, 15 pounds to win, six to lose, with, with, for big games, larger bonuses. 45 smackaroos. But they only get paid if they play. No play, no pay. And when a man is earning 20 pounds a week, if he can earn another 15 or 20 pounds a week on top, it pays him to win. But Rugby League has never scrupled to plunder Union of its best men. A fifth column of League scouts has infiltrated Wales. The Rugby League always wants that colourful person and you can get more colourful persons from Rugby Union. About a quarter of League players are Union renegades. Some prosper, some are spectacular failures. In the old days, uh, that is, you know, the turn of the century in the first 20 or 30 years of this century, when scouts from rugby league territories went down, particularly to Wales, uh, they, were, they were, you know, if they were found out, they were very badly treated, you know, thrown in the river or tarred and feathered or even beaten up. Uh, I don't think there's quite that nowadays. Eddie Waring, television commentator, was once manager of Dewsbury and Leeds. He often popped the question to union men. Oh, it was just a job of work. I never thought, uh, you know, it's going like going buy a steak in a hotel or something. I don't uh, look upon it as uh, anything very difficult. For leaving the valleys and joining Salford Rugby League Club, David Watkins of Newport and Wales pocketed £13,000 tax-free. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, the, the reason I turned professional was from a financial point of view. Um, I think everybody has to secure themselves for life, and this was an opportunity for me to secure myself for life. Billy Wood and Ken Broom of Wigan are experts at invading Union territory. I, I've been on several pitches, uh, uh, ostensibly looking for an autograph, but in fact, uh, the user approach is, uh, put your address on here, we know your name. And of course, if you get the chap's uh, address, address. Well, you also know that uh, you, you're at least interested. And from then on, it's, it's pure business. And I had £4,000 and £5 notes in a brown paper parcel. Yes, we used to this do is that, didn't we? No kidding, this. And uh, we went down on the Sunday. We met this boy in a little pub. That was his uncle's. I know what you're speaking of. And I noticed an international fullback, a Welsh international fullback. And uh, we made arrangements to meet his father. We always do this if a fellow isn't 21. And this boy wasn't 21 at the time. So he arranged to meet his father and his mother. This is Sunday. <coughs> and when we went up to his home, the council house, his father was just coming home from the mines. And he's dirt. And that boy was offered £4,000. I opened the paper, the parcel, the paper parcel, to let him look to show it was sincere. He said, no, no, no. The idea there. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a working class type of fellow that, that uh, 
shall I say, takes the bait or makes the right decision. And the only, I think the only people that we leave alone, we don't, seriously. When the people are going to Cambridge, Oxford and Cambridge, we always say, well, that's yeah. something out yeah. of our... You know, there's no chance of getting these boys, so we just leave them alone. Well, it's no secret. It can't be in my little tiny village at Trebanog at home in the Ronda Valley because uh, that I was offered money to become a rugby league player uh, because um, people arrived from Wigan and Leeds and on a Sunday morning, a Rolls Royce car outside the front door of a terraced house in Wales. Well, isn't a commonplace thing. So everybody knew they were there to talk rugby league terms with me. Uh, strictly speaking, I then became a professional because one is not allowed to uh, discuss or negotiate. But as my mother said, and I said, look, I mustn't talk with them, ma'am, because I, I, I have to give up my amateur status. My mother said, well, you can't leave them on the doorstep. Bring them in. And my mother used to cook food. You know, I mean, thank lots of people came down, not to buy me, but to get ham and chips from my mother. Assuming, say, we find them, for instance, when they can just get him married, that's a good time, because they want a house, and uh, they, they're probably laborers in, in some cases. You get all walks of life, fact, right? ordinary people. Mm. And we can say to them, well, all right, we, we prepared to give you so much money to sign, cash money, there's no tax from it or anything. It's, uh, it's on the basis of relinquishing their the amateur, amateur status. status. They came to Ireland on one occasion to talk with my wife that is now, and she, I was courting her in those days, to try to say to her, look, you know, if, you, if he becomes a rugby league player, you'll have a lovely house and a car. And what's he got now? He's got a, hasn't got very much of a job, not earning very much money. And this is a great temptation, you know. They played it that way. I didn't mind it, didn't resent it. Uh, and I believe that people who resent uh, rugby league scouts and people offering, offering money, I mean, everybody's got his own sense of values. And it's up to the individual. I don't believe that uh, you can say they're playing dirty tactics by offering money. I mean, for goodness sake, lots and most fellas in Wales are delighted to have an offer. <laughs> Aren't they? I mean, really are. Right, well, the next match, uh, lads, is Huddersfield and Hull. Uh, what have you got, Jim? Well, Jim sure. Windsor and co. sit down in Leeds to fix the odds for a weekly rugby league coupon that they know only a few thousand will fill out. All in favour, right. right. Huddersfield, Six, three. Now, oh, here's a good match. In the Wigan Allen match, what do you suggest we give, Jim? What's that? Like the coupon? Many league clubs stagger on from crisis to crisis, losing ground each year against creeping social change. Betting shops, television, Saturday afternoon shopping with the wife, Leeds United, Everton and the rest. A very good figure. I'm going to suggest we give all in 12, I think. To survive, more and more clubs are taking a lead from Salford. They're becoming amusement centres and social clubs. We have a set of race in the club tonight. Congratulations to Gladys, which is Gladys, please. Let's see Gladys there. That's it. Stand up, Gladys. That's good. Now, she's getting married a week on Saturday. Give her a hand, please. A week on Saturday. That's better. And it's best wishes from all your friends. Elaine, Linda, Gladys, Rita, Ethel, Maureen, Irene, June, Jackie, Linda, and June. And at the end is Paul there. It is Paul. Very lucky man. Congratulations, Gladys. All the best to you. Have a good day. A week on Saturday. Thank you, Bets. <laughs> no more bets. More fans watch Manchester United every Saturday than the combined support of all 30 rugby league clubs. These clubs must pick up on the wheel what they lose on the turnstile. Salford was once down at heel. Now it is rich. It can afford costly union starlets. <laughs> Salford will eventually cap its casino and club with squash courts. This year, it took its place in Manchester's Steak Diane Belt with a plush restaurant opened, tankard in hand, by the mayor of Salford. Mm -hmm. That's it. It worked. And it worked. Let's take the thing thumb off it. <laughs> in these surroundings, Salford can make money and find jobs for their players. But the club's stately pleasure dome is no more than a carrot to lure the fans, an appendix to the club's prime purpose. If by some other method I can bring people along to, to watch games, even if it's only to come and eat in a restaurant before the game, and they watch the game and they, once or twice and they come and, they, and they'll be fine, they'll, be, they'll become converted to it. But if the way to a fan's heart is through his stomach, Purists of the game, its origins, roots and feel, might turn to a humbler club whose notions are perhaps less grandiose. 
to Yorkshire and Featherstone Rovers, motto, nil desperandum. Featherstone is only station lane and low houses on either side. It's a village and not very pretty. At Featherstone, they mine coal and play rugby league. There are 14,000 Featherstonians, and there cannot be a smaller community whose ground is so regularly thronged by talent spotters and the national press. Rovers still kept their unbeaten home league record with typically fierce forward play. Well, uh, naturally, being colliers, they've always supplied the rugby league with some of the finest forwards we've ever had in the game. The reason, of course, working in the pit, they were tough guys. Full point. Big Mal, M-A-L, short for Malcolm, Dixon, D-I-X-O-N, bumped off a defender. The Rovers' success is fed through to Manchester. It'll be fed back again in the York traditions only. For unlike soccer, rugby league sells few newspapers. Okay, thanks very much. About half the Featherstone Rovers side work in the pit. In, in olden days, and there were no pit head baths then, and they used to come and play only in the pit muck. Well, you see, it's laughable. You used to think they were half-cast when they went out for you. Mm. When he goes to work at these bits, he's working among rugby league people. Brought up in rugby league. And they talk about it, they live for it, and that's it. Laurie, this is Macklin's report. Page 31, Yorkshire. Featherstone Rovers have won. The players are on the winning bonus, £14. If they win again on Saturday, it'll be £15. If they lose, only £7. Uh, right all then, lads. Uh, Saturday, we just have two minutes on Saturday's match, and that is obviously we had a good match. We won fairly well, but according to the press, we ought to have got 60. And he, he was in the press box and we were on the field. But we're still, we're still making mistakes. Mostly, I would think, uh, at the back end, when we didn't get the ball out of the scrimmages when we ought to have done. The last 20 minutes, we hardly saw the ball. Featherstone Rovers, completely a mining community where at one time the miners used to pay a penny or tuppence out of their wage baggage to support the local club. And a club where the whole of the population can get into the ground at Post Office Lane. And of course, they were in the final a couple of days ago and very successful. May the 13th, 1967, and with a trail of slaughtered Goliaths in their wake, the village bore home in triumph the great Rugby League Cup. We've only 13 and a half thousand inhabitants, you know. And they... You see, it, it made history for this village. It's, it's, it's unique. It, nobody gave our team a chance. Not one person gave our team a chance to win this cup. We're just a local side with local boys Majority of all local boys are all working lads, part-time uh, footballers. So they are part-time. And nobody give them a chance, and against all the odds... Oh, interception! Oh, it's a try! Interception! Oh, what a pass! Oh, what an interception! And what a try to go on, Thomas! No wonder! On that day, the village side played before 90,000 at Wembley. Malcolm, Malcolm has the ball here. This is one of their, one of their players who was tackling... The Rovers coach, then as now, Mr Laurie Gant, an old Rover himself, famous for his exploit in the 52 final when, after a rub down with brandy and rum, he played with pneumonia. There's no doubt about it. It was team spirit among them boys what won this cup. They won this cup in the dressing room with team spirit and they were just one happy family, them boys. If Tranmere Rovers had won the FA Cup, it wouldn't have been a greater surprise. The team trains two evenings a week after work. 
The players are local men, for Featherstone can't afford to buy. It's much more likely to balance its books from selling, from transfer fees for its own homemade talent. Jumping on the spot. Come on, come on. Come on, hop, hop, get him up! Hop, 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 get him up! Right up, well done, Mick. Well done, hop, 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 right up! Marama, honey! Some clubs are limited companies. Featherstone still managed by committee. A builder, master cobbler, welder, factory owner, and four colliery workers pick Saturday's team. If the club fell on really hard times, they could guarantee it perhaps a hundred or two hundred pounds out of their own savings. All at the same time, ready. All out in one big gulp, ready, hop. Last one. Saturday, an hour before the kickoff. Well, he's played every match as Jim this year, this season. We can't leave him out. He's too good to leave out. Never rest. So Featherstone prepared to defend an unbeaten home record. Laurie Gant, slave driver and father figure, has an enormous executive cigar in his tracksuit pocket. If Featherstone win, he'll smoke it. And there's a chap that I'm afraid I don't know much about called Ogden. Anybody know Ogden? I don't know a lot about him. He's liable to run. <laughs> expect him to dummy. Expect him to make openings. Expect him to run. Expect anything. So down him straight away. <laughs> they come along, I think, in rugby league particularly, uh, to see the strange amalgam that rugby league offers. A fast, exciting, skillful play and sheer primitive physical contact. I think when you see a huge forward crashing his way through tackle after tackle by sheer physical endeavour and delivering a mighty handoff with a brawny arm which sends the full back flying, you associate yourself with that man and it's you who are knocking people over and it's your hand that is knocking people flying. And I, I think you enjoy it. And uh, if a psychiatrist were to wax fulsome about this, he'd say it's cathartic in the sense that it gets rid of the latent violence in us all. And the excitement of, of a forward battering ram uh, is something which releases them, perhaps for just one day a week, away from the monotony of their work. It's a game that gets old off you, <laughs> isn't it? It gets old, it grips you, you know. It's a man's game, really. It's into a woman's game, you know. It's good, rough and tough, isn't it? It is, it's, it's great, I love it. It's a close it's your, ears your ears sometimes, because, you see, men, they forget that the women are there. and They think that um, if you say anything, you say, oh, well, women shouldn't be watching rugby league. <laughs> Get that Featherstone bloody hooker up there! Are you being pulled in, Alan? He's having us. We're getting an advantage when we get down, pushing. Yeah. And he's having us going backwards. And then he's letting them put ball in while we're going backwards, and we've no chance, Larry. Fair enough. So that's a mark. Stop there. Go to the mark, then. Go to the mark. Play to the whistle. Go to the mark and stop there. Don't don't give them that advantage. Don't give the referee the advantage of sending you back. Now that's the first thing, a right nice tight pack. But we're all right with the ball. Fairly even, Stevens. We're doing all right. I'm taking yeah. those forward and then Keith's got to hang back for stand up. Half time. Featherstone could lose. Eight pounds bonus money is at stake. So is the prospect of a nice cigar. Laurie Gant, Sergeant Major, turns Laurie Gant diplomat. Oh, yeah. But we're saying now, against this team, you've got to do something extra special. It's a little bit harder for you. You're going to have to look blind, aren't you? And if there's nothing doing, you're going to have to get across a little bit quicker. So it is, John. Do the same things that you are doing, but it's a little bit of extra work for you. Come on, Featherstone! Game down! Come on! They were offside a mile, that player. Oh. 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 Oh.
Daddy. Hey, give us a minute, give us a minute. So, what's this now? All right, Daddy. Yes, all right, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well done. Mm. You're going to make a good winger. Well done, Jalal. Well done. Well Always get a cigar when we win. No, no. All right, now. Well, what's it been like? You get tired? Sure. Well played. All right. Well done, Well done. Congratulations, John. Well done. You're a good one. Put your cap, Hey, hello. Hey, don't be like that with you, William. You better go. Which is Lindsay? What happened to that side there? You lost ball and Vince scored. He knocked it out of his hand. He knocked it out of his hand. Throw a back pass. I wonder what happened. It's an hard game. Back pass. 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 Back <laughs> the aftermatch booze up so beloved by union players is foreign to clubs like Featherstone. In league, it's a cup of tea, a sandwich, a chat, and then home. For in league, it's the supporters who make a night out of it at the supporters' social club. I gave caviar to Barbara Castle. And it gave her such a thrill. I gave Cathy out to Barbara Castle, and she jumped in bed with the transport bill. La 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 la. Hey, come on, keep it up. Come on. This is how we want it on Saturday. Not It's a hard game, hard for players to play, hard for clubs to survive. And Rugby League, sent to Coventry for three quarters of a century, fights the good fight. For want of a nail, the battle was lost. For want of six shillings, British rugby was lost. But rugby was not the only casualty. Every pinprick, snub, rebuff, every hot word and cold shoulder added its drop of poison to the cauldron of class and regional suspicion. Parting with out when you've gone your body. Are you ready, lad? Lad, up it, eh? Lift him up. Up, 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 up. Go on, Steve, get him up. Come on, Tommy. Come on, lad, get him up, Up it, eh? Get him well up, Steve. Go on, Mick, get him up there, lad. That's it. Make him tuck them chins, Mick. Up it, eh? Stick them chests, lad. That'll do, lads. Straight into this one, lad. Come on. Straight into it, Mal. Come on, we're starting. Come on, John. We've been going five minutes. Come on, lads, a bit faster. Keep on going. Bend them back, Scott. That's it there. Well done. Come on, Mal. In a minute, Ken. Come on, Tom. Keep on going. Come on, lads, a bit faster. 